In this Wrestle Talk news, Bray Wyatt teases a WWE return, WWE want MJF, and even more AEW titles. Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos, especially if you're WWE wrestler Seth Rollins, because then you wouldn't have to publicly join AEW's live streams to find out what's going on. Support Wrestle Talk! In one of the better segments of Monday's episode of Raw, Seth Rollins cut a shoot promo on Cody Rhodes for leaving WWE to get some new little friends, where he then tried to tear down the house Rollins was building. Probably the most direct reference yet to where Cody's been for the last six years. But maybe that's because Seth himself only just found out what's been happening, as Twitter user Drain Bamager has posted a screenshot of the moment Rollins' official account joined the post Double or Nothing media scrum to watch CM and Punk talk about winning the championship. Seth Rollins to AEW confirmed. It's nice to see any random moment screenshotted from that live stream has at least four of the five comments arguing with each other. You goddamn bots. We've actually been able to procure genuine footage of Seth joining the AEW media call and his reaction. This f guy, he f he did the Friday Night War, he did the first dance. He's done the record double or nothing, he did the record all out in his debut. FTR might not have been on the premium live event, but they sure were in the ring after the show went off air, celebrating with their backstage buddy CM Punk. Guys, you're in the pinnacle, you're exposing the business. Now Punk has made his intentions clear for his click-like faction that already holds the AEW World Championship and ROH and AAA Tag Team Championships. He wants even more gold. Replying to a photo, posted by Wrestling Wizard with the caption New team just dropped for the trios tournament a reference to AEW's long-rumored six-man tag belts that will be introduced eventually Punk himself has replied Just give us the straps so we don't have to hurt your faves Punk said in an interview last week that he would be happy wrestling FTR for the rest of his career He's become such good friends with them It's good he's got a few buddies backstage because it sure isn't Eddie Kingston who's reacted to AEW's post about Punk being the new AEW world champion by simply tweeting gross we've also had the first comment from the man punk beat hangman page who's tweeted i've had a while to reflect on my time as aew champion now that it's come to an end thank you all not for supporting me but for supporting the vision it's not about the gold or the glory it's about the common love and dignity with which we treat each other change the world it doesn't sound like Hangman will be confronting Punk for a rematch anytime soon, because perhaps that spot is reserved for a huge ex-WWE star returning to wrestling. It's been... 10 months since Bray Wyatt was shockingly released by WWE on the 31st of July last year. That means it's been 10 months of us all assuming every blackout spot in AEW meant Bray debuting confirmed, when really, it's Sting again pretty much always Sting. Or that one time Satnam Singh. The first reports had him debuting at AEW's Grand Slam show in September, then Impact's Bound for Glory show in October, then it emerged he was actually working on producing a movie. He was most recently spotted doing a meet and greet at WrestleCon in April that took place over WrestleMania weekend. Now, in a spat of Twitter activity, we've had the clearest tease the former Wyatt, now going by his real name, Wyndham Rotunda, is returning to wrestling. Firstly, Rotunda changed his Twitter name from a red circle to Wyatt Six. A very interesting development, as he has avoided his Bray Wyatt name since his 90-day non-compete clause expired last October. Some have speculated this could mean a WWE comeback, with the number six referring to the amount of days until his return at Hell in a Cell on Sunday. His Twitter handle remains Wyndham Six. He then posted a new profile picture of an upside-down moth with a red scribbled-out face, another puzzle loaded with potential meaning. Could it be a butterfly emerging from its state of metamorphosis? Are the red lines there to signify fire, like a firefly? And am I just seeing things, or is that the face of the fiend when you look at the moth the right way up in the scribbles? Oh my god, oh my god, it's staring into my very soul! Just like any Bray Wyatt promo, we then got a follow-up of cryptic, semi-frustrating words. Everything good that's ever happened to me first came a period horrible suffering. I never ask why, I just wait for the rough part to end. I was chosen for whatever reason, and I've got to do. Doesn't hurt anymore, it burns. I'm ready now. Red circle emoji. I'm tired of watching. 
Tired of hearing irrelevant clowns speculate how I'll be perceived. Tired of hearing about my greed, my desire questioned. Wherever and whenever I decide to return, I'll remind everyone why they know my name. Again and again. Believe in me. Hashtag, I found it. Patience, it's almost time. Bray Wyatt about to control his narrative confirmed. As Cody Rhodes has proved, any WWE return is possible. Wyatt's relationship with Vince McMahon was recently described as an almost father-son dynamic backstage, where McMahon would gushingly praise him when he liked what he was doing, but be cruelly angry when he didn't. And for those of you going, well, if it was such a father-son relationship, why did he release him? Vince fired his own son, Shane, just four months ago. But Wyatt's tweets come at a crucial time for AEW2. Tonight's episode of Dynamite is not only a big post-pay-per-view episode, which often sees big angles or debuts, it's also a big night for business, business, business. For the first time since Warner Bros has merged with Discovery, putting question marks over AEW's long-term future on their channels TNT and TBS, executives will be attending the live show tonight. Debuting Wyatt, arguably the biggest free agent in wrestling right now, would be a great way to impress them. What do you think Wyatt is teasing? Let me know in the comments. Previous reports put Bray's WWE contract at over $4 million a year. He reportedly had a very high asking price to return to wrestling, which is what caused last year's AEW talks to fall through. But that isn't the only contract headache Tony Khan currently has to deal with. Just when you think wrestling is going to settle down, it manages to find a whole new gear of shock. And one of the more surprising stories this year is the once unthinkable change in direction of just WWE talent going to AEW. Now the high profile stories are about top AEW talent leaving on their own accord to go to WWE. Cody Rhodes has eased the immediate burial fears of anyone thinking the grass may be greener with money. And Double or Nothing Weekend saw the next potential defection explode. MJF no-showed a fan meet and greet on Saturday, and there was speculation he even might no-show the pay-per-view the next day. Watch our Wrestle Talk News episode in the video description below to find out about the backstage heat this has put on Max. Reports and rumours have been circulating since the start of the year about how MJF feels he should be paid more. Wade Keller on PW Torch has now revealed exactly how far apart that money situation is. MJF is unhappy with the amount of ex-WWE stars who have come into AEW on contracts worth substantially more than his. This situation deteriorated to an extent where MJF was in a bad place and in no place to be in public, which is why he no-showed the meet and greet. MJF gets really worked up, and by all accounts he's been so worked up that he just became sort of withdrawn and bitter to observers and people who have been around him or observed him at Dynamite lately. The tension between MJF and Tony has been building for two months, initially sparked by Max not getting approval from AEW for the Ariel Hawani interview he did back in April. While that was a relatively minor deal, as AEW would have more than likely given approval if asked, it acted as the proverbial straw performing a backbreaker on a camel. Keller said MJF's contract is worth like hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it is modest compared to the contracts of more than a half a dozen free agent signings AEW has made over the past year. Christian, Mark Henry, Malachi Black, Adam Cole, Brian Danielson, CM Punk. Those wrestlers are getting paid four or five times more than him. So, you know, MJF is by all accounts, is kind of fuming over this. Max did get a raise at the start of the year, but he felt disrespected that it was still so far below other talent. Keller then added that, if anything, this just makes WWE want him more, with his source there saying MJF is coveted and would likely be given a lucrative contract offer, and Max has been impressed with how Cody has been treated there. Even with WWE's recent experience with the Sasha Banks and Naomi walkout on Raw, Keller says, One source in WWE told me that MJF is seen as such a commodity that his recent and tractable behaviour on and off air with AEW wouldn't deter Vince McMahon from making him a lucrative offer. MJF is under contract until the start of 2024, so WWE can't legally make any offers until then. But in true MJF style, he has liked a tweet of Keller's story about WWE wanting him. Max and Tony are set to meet ahead of Dynamite today to discuss this situation, but he'll likely be off the show to sell his injuries 
stories from Wardlow. PW Insider have confirmed MJF arrived in Los Angeles, being spotted in LAX airport. But that's not the only big show happening today, as it's Quizzle Mania on parts for known at the earlier time of 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, and 4 p.m. GMT, with me versus Luke versus Laurie versus Sully in a CBW special. Click the Quizzle Mania video on the right to set a reminder for it now and chant it with me, folks. Joe. Joe. Joe.